Hey everybody, Neil here. Um, said that I was going to put out a video in regards to a tweet that um, Addy put out. Addy, if I'm mispronouncing your, your name wrong, just correct me. Let me know. Sorry, I'm terrible with names. Um, <clears throat> but anyways, I said I'd, uh, Addy said basically, well, what's the use cases of floating groups and bubble apart from floating headers? floating icons on the bottom to right. Um, Kelly came in and said she doesn't use them a ton, but found uh, floating groups handy for holding buttons. You want to always live at the bottom. So a few other people I think commented on how they use floating groups, but I actually do something <clears throat> maybe a little different than a lot of people do with floating groups. And I actually use it as a container and single page applications to hold what I call views of uh, reusable pages or reusable elements that I call <clears throat> views that are essentially my pages for my single page application. There's good reasons for doing this. One, it makes the code a little more modular. Um, it, you, when you're building a single page app, if you don't break it out into reusable uni, uh, elements, things tend to get um, a little cluttered in your element tree and a lot of things are loading on that page. Um, obviously they're loading in reusable elements as well, but I just think it's nice. It's a good way to keep things nice and neat and clean. <clears throat> Excuse me, I was mowing the lawn and I got um, grass in my throat. But anyway, so I, I do something a little bit different. I do use them for, uh, <clears throat> I build a lot of single page applications. I'm not a big fan of multi-page applications, but I do use them for headers. Um, <clears throat> navigation bars, flyout bars, and footers. But predominantly, um, this video, I'm going to show you kind of what I do, and I think it'll help some of you guys um, building uh, really nice, uniform, single-page applications. <clears throat> so let's go through my new application, Driftwind. This is, uh, I'm building it in the, the way I just mentioned, but <clears throat> I have a reusable here that's a floating group that's the header. <clears throat> On the left, I have a reusable element that's a navigation bar and then on the bottom I have a reusable element that's a footer so if I go over to my element tree and I highlight pages I actually have <clears throat> a floating group that's basically the body of my single page application and this is always visible there's just no background or anything like that and what I do is I use it to contain um, reusable elements <clears throat> that I use as pages or I like to call them views more than pages because they're not actual pages um, so if you click through these I have different views that show based on URL path parameters or just typical URL parameters so <clears throat> and I'll and I'll step you through this a little bit so let's preview this real quick <clears throat> let's get rid of the debug <clears throat> so you can see here I've got a nice application with reusable elements so if I click on API based on my um, URL path that I'm <clears throat> that I'm doing that I actually learned this from Eli Beachy and I put out a video the other day as well that um, you can actually do um, really good pretty URLs and navigation natively in Bubble without having to use something like Sudsy. I've always used Sudsy. It's a paid, paid plugin. It's a really good plugin. Um, I think it's still relevant in certain, certain use cases and applications. But for the most part, Eli showed us that we can do it natively. And it's working really good. And my app is really fast. And it's easy to navigate. So I'll step you through this. But <clears throat> if I click on navigations, basically when integrations... Uh, Segment list number two is showing it'll show this view and I have another video that goes into this and so and Eli has a more in-depth video uh, about using URL paths to um, To navigate your app with pretty URLs. So <clears throat> let's go back to the uh, editor and Essentially what I'm doing is I have these views that are pages and I'm showing them in my main single page application page in this floating group. So this, this element here is a floating group. And the trick to this is I had somebody say, yes, I've done something similar, but I get scroll bars over here on the right. So if you 
scroll up, you see I get a double kind of scroll bar here, one for the browser and then one for the floating group. And I'll show you how to get rid of the browser one and only have the one underneath the header and the footer, in between the header and the footer. So it gives it a nice, really nice application feel. Um, so let's see here. So let's go back to the editor and let's go ahead and view one of these pages. Um, let's do, uh, let's do integrations. So this, this page here. So what you're going to want to do, the trick to this is in this floating group that contains these views, you have to set it to both. Set the float uh, relative to both. And what that'll do is it'll give you that inner scroll bar that you see right here. You can barely see it on the inside because I have some code giving me some real nice scroll bars here. But in order to not get that other scroll bar, and James talks about a little bit about this as well, is in all your pages or views, let's go to, um, oops, excuse me, let's go to view API. You want to zero out the height before you deploy. So if you go to layout, you'll see I've got my height zeroed out. If you need to edit this, you just come back in, stretch the width and do what you need to do and then zero it back out. So let's go to um, integrations. This looks zeroed out as well. And this one is not zeroed out. So I'll zero this out. And then let's go back to my main single page application page. And then let's zero this out as well. And you're going to see this completely disappear. <clears throat> and what that does is, is it gets rid of that browser scroll bar over on the right side. Basically because the browser can't recognize that it needs to scroll because it's the, the height is zero pixels. So you see I've only got one scroll bar here in between my header and my footer. So it looks really nice. It just gives you a really nice look and feel. Um, if you scroll way up, you'll notice my navigation on the left gets a scroll bar as well because that's a floating group and it's floating relative to both. So that's how you kind of get that really nice look and feel there. Um, <clears throat> and if you need to work and go back in, just expand it to whatever you like and then just do your work and then zero it back out and then deploy. Um, I think that's about it. I'm not sure what, if you guys have any questions, just ping me on Twitter and I'll try to help you guys. But that gives you a really nice use case for floating groups other than uh, just using them as headers, navs, footers, things like that. So basically I just use it as a wrapper that holds all my views that are reusable element pages. And what this also does is it keeps your element tree real nice and neat. When you're not really working in pages, you can have this collapse. Let's say you had 30 different views. You could have this collapse and you'd have a really clean uh, page here. So, so yeah, that's kind of, I like to build my apps quite a bit like this. Um, like I said, if you guys have any questions, just send me a tweet, DM me or whatever, and I'd be glad to help you out. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.